Remember when they hated, didn't think we make it Now they break their neck just to look at me Remember when I called you and you didn't fall through Now you hate yourself, you can't look at me, look at me yeah. You made me And what up, what up, what up? What's good with y'all? So, as you see right now, I am currently at the shop, and that's because the original intro I did, for some reason, decided not to save, or it did save, but it didn't have audio, so good thing I checked that, because I wanna say a good four minutes of the video wouldn't have been here. So, we're already here at the shop, uh, redoing the intro. Got Nita with me. She decided to come chill with me at the shop right now. All right, Nita, million dollar question, all right? Is you ready? Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. What sound does the Corvette make? <laughs> oh God, here you go with that. Uh, I just know it shakes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be working on the Fox body. And if you guys see the title, you guys know that we did a little something something. <sighs> something that I probably didn't really need to do. You guys seen I've been back and forth about a few decisions with the Fox body. I've been going up, down, left, right, trying to figure out if I want to do head cam intake, if I want to do turbo, if I want to do supercharger, if I want to swap with an LS3. I even considered doing an RB25 swap. I've been all over with this car and trying to figure out a game plan and a direction that I wanted to go that I thought would be suitable for for uh, for this car. And we came to a conclusion, as you can see by the title, that I ended up doing something. I did a thing. The thing I did was I finally made a decision. I ordered the goodies for the Fox body. All the goodies have been ordered. Guess I can go ahead and tell y'all what we ended up doing. What are the official plans for the Fox body? Because now we have an official game plan. So you guys remember when I was saying that I kind of want to do head cam intake. Then I was saying I was thinking about doing the GT40 heads with the on three uh, performance turbo kit. Uh, I was weighing my options, trying to figure out which uh, direction I wanted to go. And I ended up coming to the conclusion and buying both kits. So the new plan for this, we're gonna be doing the trick flow top end kit, which, uh, which consists of the intake manifold, the trick flow valve covers, the trick flow uh, twisted edge hedges, uh, twisted, ah, twisted edge heads, which are uh, the 170 heads. We're also doing the uh, trick flow stage one cam, comes with the roller rockers and everything. And then I'm gonna be throwing that on with the on three performance turbo kit. So this thing uh, escalated pretty quickly. I was planning on doing head and cam, and then I looked at videos and heard the way Turbo Foxes sounded, and I was just like, ooh, these Turbo, these turbo uh, 5.0s kind of sound good. And I was like, you know what? I know me. I'm literally daily driving a 480 horsepower uh, C6 as my daily driver, so there's no way that I'm going to be building this car and restoring it to be happy with. 300, 320 horsepower NA, like, I know it's not gonna happen. Uh, so I just went ahead and got both kits. I'm probably gonna throw the head cam combo on first, see how I like it. And then right after I'll probably throw the, <laughs> throw the turbo on. When I started this build, did you think I was gonna turbo it or did you think I was gonna leave it alone? Are you kidding me? What'd you think? What'd you think was gonna happen with this car? The most extra shit ever. <laughs> I mean, man, I just couldn't justify. This is like my, this was my first car. Y'all know this is my very first car. I had this car since I was in high school. So like, I just didn't feel right underdoing, underdoing it. Like this used to be childhood goals for me and Aaron when we both wanted Fox bodies. And now that I have it, I have the money to kind of do what I want to it. I feel like I would really like to separate my Fox body versus a lot of the head cam intake Fox bodies that are on the streets at the sideshows, 
or even on YouTube. I'm looking at YouTube right now and I'm like just, you know, looking at other people's builds and a lot of these builds when you see Fox Body with Headcam Intake or Turbo Kiss, they're from like seven years ago, nine years ago, uh, a couple, couple years ago. There isn't really anybody recently doing much to these cars like on YouTube. So I feel like I want to do the basic essentials and like it's really not it's really not complicated it's a bunch of bolt on stuff but i kind of want to represent and be a pillar for uh for the fox body people man a lot of people are saying like a lot of the four dudes are saying get rid of this coyote swap it like i'm not doing a coyote swap i understand it's a newer motor it keeps it forward i just don't want to do a coyote i really want to keep this thing original uh 302 this motor has super low miles, believe it or not. It's, you know, all the aesthetics on the outside look a little bit weathered, but the inside of this motor is super clean. And part of the reason I didn't even swap this like I was planning on to because I was originally planning on doing a wide body. I was gonna go crazy with this and make this into a full track car, but seeing as how it's a um, 25th year anniversary, actual real CHP, you got the dog tags in here and everything. I decided to keep this thing forward and keep it more on the original side just to keep the value and the uh, heritage of the car. Call me crazy, I know. I'm not looking to even probably sell this thing anytime soon, but from a value standpoint, later down the line, if I did decide to sell it or whatever, it would maintain value with having the original motor with just kind of like a period correct build. And with the uh, Trick Flow top end kit and the On3 Performance Turbo kit, it's capable of fucking anywhere from 400 to 700 horsepower so it's you know it gives me a big range to to play with but it also keeps this car super period correct for what it is and that's kind of what i want to do with this car yes i could swap a jay-z in here i could swap a ls3 or whatever i wanted to and, and made 900 horsepower or whatever but for the the rarity of this chassis and what it is I feel like this is the uh, the proper way to go about it. All right, so this is what we getting into today. You guys can see this is the old wheel right here, boofed. This one, boofed, boofed. The current column that is in your right, whoop, it's a new column, remove that. So things that I don't like about the tilt is look, you can see that, has some like playing it doesn't have any side to side but up and down has a good amount of play and right here you can see key solenoid is all the way in but when you turn this thing there is no click it doesn't engage in anything so we're gonna be taking this tilt column out a lot of people like this because of the freaking steering wheel but i'm doing a whole nrg setup so i don't really care to have it just because of the steering wheel and then here's the new column. I made sure this time around, I grabbed the column that was 100% complete. Nothing was taken off of it. Still has the blinkers. Everything is on this one. And on this column, it didn't have the uh, key release pin, whereas this one does have the key release pin. And it came with a key. So y'all can hear it clicking. This fool, this fool Rick just pulled up slapping hyphy music Man, from the early 2000s. I'm old. <laughs> Probably in here listening to Too Short. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot Too Short. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get me started. All right, so this thing going up, that way we can disconnect the steering shaft down here and then everything else comes from the top. On Fox Bodies, it's hella weird because there's no splines. You know how usually on the, uh, on the steering shaft, it, it sits in there on a spline, but on here there's no, there is no spline. What? I got a nail? No, I thought you did this. <laughs> Man, I was nothing. about to say these new tires. All right, so old one out. Now we about to get this new jammy in here. Try to lift this up, back a little further, tiny bit. Hold on, back a little more, a little more. All right, hold on. Push it, push it. Yeah, we good. Turn it a little bit to the right. Other way, other way, other way, other way. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I ain't worried about my 12 volt. So is it gonna start or what? It's gonna start on the key, man. Start on the key? I hear the fuel pump? Okay. 
Come on. Clutch in? Or are you too short? <laughs> yeah. Carb cleaner, this gonna work. Alright. <laughs> nah. What, the no. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, it's just out of gas. She needs some gas. Well, at least she start up with the key. That's all that matters. We got a turn signal or no? Huh? No? No? Oh man. Oh yeah, it's flickering. This one's on. We got one light on. The other one's on too. Alright, hit the brakes again. There, yeah, these are bright. Reverse lights. Well, I got red reverse lights. All right, so we about to be calling it a day. Ended up getting this thing. Pretty much uh, got this thing back together. I need to order some headlights. I was gonna do a LED conversion, full LED on the headlights, same that I did in the rear. For some reason, the turn signal wasn't working. I pulled Aaron's fuse out of his car to try to check it and see if it was possibly uh, this fuse, but it's still not working. So I have an extra uh, switch, switch panel that I can try, but Lisa's in here. I'm gonna contact NRG to uh, finalize my, my short hub and quick release setup. That way we can get that in here. Seat brackets are on the way. So I'm gonna probably be putting the bucket seats in here, pulling these back seats off. <laughs> Crazy, these niggas too shady, speed limit 65 I'm a 